കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം ഈദ നമസ്തെ So welcome to our new series on the Drig Drishya Vivekaha. This is a gem. <laughs> a wonderful little scripture that I discovered by the grace of Ramana Maharshi and Sadhu Om who were both very familiar with it. And once you hear about this scripture you'll be able to understand how its wisdom shows up in their books their books and talks so what's so great about this book <laughs> well for one thing it's very short only 42 shlokas and each shloka is is very short and to the point there's no flowery language or poetic license Uh, no stories it's very technical but it gives great bliss and bestows moksha on those who are qualified to receive it so let me tell you a little bit more about this book before we get started i would say in my experience that it's the most important book on the ontology of enlightenment In other words, there are so many scriptures that talk about advaita in general. But there are very few scriptures that directly talk about how it works. How the living entity, huh, the being comes into manifestation and becomes deluded by maya. How the being and the mind and senses and body and world all relate to one another and function together and this is a wonderful thing which is very very rare a functional analysis of consciousness and enlightenment this takes me back to 2005 In spring of 2005 I was sitting on a park bench in Mexico City just relaxing looking at the blooming flowers and trees and it was very interesting because the benches there are covered with vedic symbols they're painted and this is because the Aztec civilization was actually vedic but anyway I was sitting on this park bench and i was marveling at how it is that the soul i was a, a dualist back then <laughs> how is it that the soul which is completely spiritual is even able to perceive matter how is it possible they're two completely different things they shouldn't have any contact at all So how is it that that consciousness which is pure and spiritual can even perceive matter which is maya illusory conditioned and material I was sitting there thinking about this <laughs> and this led to contemplating the nature of consciousness itself and in particular my consciousness and this led to a feeling of ineffable bliss this started an inquiry not just a philosophical inquiry but in practice a meditation on the nature of consciousness and i realized that the scriptures i had been studying of the dualist vaishnava movement were totally inadequate to explain this in fact after doing a lot of research in those scriptures the only thing i could find is that there's a special potency of mahavishnu that somehow or other inexplicably allows the soul to perceive matter well that wasn't very satisfying obviously a lot more was going on because whenever i contemplated this question 
I experienced bliss. But how is that? This book explains the whole question inside and out in great detail and using simple language and simple models shows how all of this works. So that was 2005. It's only taken 15 years to answer this question. <laughs> but the important thing is it gave me the insight that led to so much research into the uh, experience of enlightenment. Not just the theory and not just the worship that's a preliminary part of enlightenment, of the spiritual path. But the actual experience of enlightenment that I had had back in 1984 for the first time. And now is a constant thing with me. So in order to understand this, you have to go deep into the Upanishads and Vedanta. And the answer is there, but it's kind of scattered among many different books. And it's very hard to piece it all together. So that's the value of this book. Drik means the seer. And Drushya means that which is seen. And Viveka means discrimination or seeing the difference between things. So Drik Drishya Viveka means the explanation of the difference or the distinction or the discrimination between the seer and the seen. Well, this is something we all experience every day, in fact, all the time. And it's one, one of the reasons why uh, I discovered the golden flower. The secret of the golden flower is a series on our channel that was revealed in a Chinese Buddhist book that was discovered and popularized by Osho Rajneesh. And the techniques that's given in the book are very powerful, very potent and immediately effective. So even though the book gives some wonderful insights, it doesn't really explain how it all works. And I'm one of these people, you know, I like to tinker. <laughs> I like to take things apart and see how they work and hopefully put them back together again and understand the mechanism behind it. So this Drig Drishya Viveka gives that explanation. It gives the functional description and the structural analysis of consciousness, the world, and enlightenment. So this is a very wonderful thing. It also explains the creation and annihilation of the universe by consciousness. Now, in the process, it reveals the answers to many questions that you probably don't even know that you have. I didn't. <laughs> but when I read the answers, it was like, oh, of course, obviously. Huh? It's obvious once you hear the answer. And it also reveals the importance of the question. But unless you read this little book, it's not found anywhere else, as far as I'm aware of. Uh, maybe in some obscure Upanishads, huh? but certainly not in the well-known Vedic literatures. Now, besides that, it corrects the, the glib and facile misunderstanding known as Neo-Advaita. Neo-Advaita is the theory huh, that simply knowing intellectually about Vedanta or about Advaita is enlightenment. That one does not need to change one's mode of life or does not need to do any sadhana or meditation. And this is very unfortunate because it blocks any chance of actually attaining enlightenment. Unfortunately, it has become very popular and because it's presented as a shortcut, it deviates people from the actual path. 
They say, well, why should I do all that hard work and meditate and be austere and all this stuff if it doesn't really make any difference for attaining enlightenment? Well, the actual truth is that it does. You can read books on Advaita all day long, or you can sit there and think about it in your mind. But that's not the same thing as realizing it. It could never be the same thing. So this book also explains very clearly the reason why that is so. And I highly recommend it to anyone. If you look in the video description, you can download a copy of this book and read it for yourself. Most people are too lazy to do that. So, you know, join our channel and watch the rest of the series <laughs> and you'll get all this information. So, the Drig Drishya Viveka provides the foundation that you need to practice meditation accurately, clearly and cleanly and get the result because it explains everything, how it works. It's not mystical and vague and all this, and it's not religious either. It's very practical and experiential. So this is scientific. Scientific method means that you make a postulate. You say, I think this is so. And then you design an experiment to actually find out if it is so or not. You have to be willing to have your postulate falsified. That is something religious people are not ready to do. Religious people want to have a belief in something long ago and far away, <laughs> some story that's in some book, and then they do all kinds of external pujas and whatevers, and then they expect they're going to get something from that. They don't. You would think after trying for many, many years, they would understand this only gives you good karma. It only gives you punya. And to actually attain enlightenment, you have to understand the whole thing and do it. That means to go within, to look within, because that's the actual source of consciousness. That's the actual place where enlightenment happens. So the prerequisites for this study are the same as we discussed in the series on Vedanta Sutra. Here's a link given by Shankaracharya. I'm not going to go into it here because it's kind of lengthy. But I do want to offer a couple of quotes from the Upanishads. Only one who has turned away from bad conduct, whose senses are controlled, whose mind is collected and at rest, can attain this Atman by intelligence. So Kata Upanishad is saying one has to discipline the mind. And how can you discipline the mind without the discipline of the body and senses? That's brought out in the next quote. This Atman is obtainable by love of truth, by austerity, by correct knowledge, by the life of chastity, brahmacharya, practiced constantly. So in other words, if someone claims to have knowledge of Advaita, and then they're going, you know, eating animal foods, or having sex life, or involved in business activities and all this kind of material activity, we can't take them seriously. In fact, my aim is to retire even from this activity of making videos and devote myself completely to this practice. But before I do that, I want to spread, I want to give and make available this highest knowledge of enlightenment. Because if you simply understand it and follow its directions to the end, you will attain moksha or liberation. Aum Tatsat.
Aum Shakti Aum.